Chapter 8 The Lord said to Joshua, Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you, and arise, go up to Ai. Behold, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people, and his city and his land. You shall do to Ai and her king as you did to Jericho and her king. Only the spoil of it and the cattle of it shall you take as a prey for yourselves. Set you an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up to Ai. And Joshua chose out thirty thousand men, the mighty men of valor, and sent them forth by night. He commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city, behind the city. Don't go very far from the city, but be ready. And I and all the people who are with me will approach to the city. It will happen when they will come out against us at the first, that we will flee before them, and they will come out after us, until we have drawn them away from the city, for they will say, They flee before us as at the first, so we will flee before them. And you will rise up from the ambush, and take possession of the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. It will be, when you have seized on the city, that you will set the city on fire, according to the word of the Lord shall you do. Behold, I have commanded you. Joshua sent them forth, and they went to set up the ambush, and stayed between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. Joshua rose up early in the morning, and mustered the people, and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people to Ai. All the people, even the men of war who were with him, went up and drew near, and came before the city, and encamped on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between him and Ai. He took about five thousand men, and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. So they set the people, even all the host who was on the north of the city, and their liars in wait who were on the west of the city. And Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. It happened, when the king of Ai saw it, that they hurried and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people at the time appointed, before the Arabah. But he didn't know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them, and fled by the way of the wilderness. All the people who were in the city were called together to pursue after them and they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who didn't go out after Israel, and they left the city open and pursued after Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the javelin that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it into your hand. Joshua stretched out the javelin that was in his hand toward the city. The ambush arose quickly out of their place and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and entered into the city and took it, and they hurried and set the city on fire. When the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this way or that way, and the people who fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, Then they turned again and killed the men of Ai. The others came forth out of the city against them, so they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they struck them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. The king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. It happened when Israel had made an end of killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness in which they pursued them, and they were all fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all Israel returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. All that fell that day, both of men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua didn't draw back his hand with which he stretched out the javelin until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for prey to themselves, according to the word of the Lord which he commanded Joshua. So Joshua burnt Ai and made it a heap forever, even a desolation to this day. The king of Ai he hanged on a tree until the evening, and at the going down of the sun Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree, 
and cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city, and raised thereon a great heap of stones to this day. Then Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, in Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones, on which no man had lifted up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings to the Lord, and sacrificed peace offerings. He wrote there on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. All Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well as the foreigner and the native, half of them in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded at the first that they should bless the people of Israel. Afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessing and the curse, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua didn't read before all the assembly of Israel, and the women, and the little ones, and the foreigners who were among them. Chapter 9 It Happened when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country and in the lowland and on all the shore of the great sea in front of Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard of it, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also resorted to a ruse and went and made as if they had been ambassadors and took old sacks on their donkeys, and wineskins, old and torn and bound up, and old and patched shoes on their feet, and old garments on them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and was become moldy. They went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal, and said to him, and to the men of Israel, We are come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, what if you dwell among us, and how shall we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Joshua said to them, Who are you, and from where do you come? They said to him, From a very far country your servants are come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Heshbon and to all king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provision in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and tell them, We are your servants, and now make a covenant with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go to you, but now, behold, it is dry and has become moldy, and these wineskins which we filled were new, and behold, they are torn, and these are garments, and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. The men took of their provision, and didn't ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Joshua made peace with them, and made a covenant with them to let them live, and the princes of the congregation swore to them. It happened at the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them, that they heard that they were their neighbors, and that they lived among them. The children of Israel traveled and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Shepherah and Beeroth and Kiriath Jarim. The children of Israel didn't strike them, because the princes of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. All the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This we will do to them, and let them live, lest wrath be on us, because of the oath which we swore to them. The princes said to them, Let them live. So they became woodcutters and drawers of water to all the congregation, as the princes had spoken to them. Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you, when you dwell among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and there shall never fail to be of you bondservants, 
both woodcutters and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told your servants, how that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid for our lives because of you, and have done this thing. Now, behold, we are in your hand, as it seems good and right to you, do to us. So did he to them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, that they didn't kill them. That day Joshua made those woodcutters, and drawers of water for the congregation, and for the altar of the Lord to this day, in the place which he should choose. Chapter 10 Now it happened, when Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai, and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great city, as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men of it were mighty. Therefore, Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, sent to Hoham, king of Hebron, and to Piram, king of Jarmuth, and to Japhia, king of Lachish, and to Deber, king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us strike Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their host, and encamped against Gibeon and made war against it. The men of Gibeon sent to Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Don't slack your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly and save us and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country are gathered together against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him and all the mighty men of valor. The Lord said to Joshua, Don't fear them, for I have delivered them into your hands. Therefore shall not a man of them stand before you. Joshua therefore came on them suddenly, for he went up from Gilgal all the night. The Lord confused them before Israel, and he killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them by the way of the Asin of Beth Horon, and struck them to Asaka and to Makeda. It happened, as they fled from before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from the sky on them to Asaka, and they died. And there were more who died with the hailstones than they whom the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel. And he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still on Gibeon, you, moon, in the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still and the moon stayed, until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Isn't this written in the book of Jeshar? The sun stayed in the midst of the sky and didn't hurry to go down about a whole day. There was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord listened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp to Gilgal. These five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave at Makeda. It was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hidden in a cave at Makeda. Joshua said, Roll great stones to the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to keep them. But don't stay, pursue after your enemies, and strike the hindmost of them. Don't allow them to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. It happened when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of killing them with a very great slaughter until they were consumed, and the remnant which remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, that all the people returned to the camp to Joshua and Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring forth those five kings to me out of the cave. They did so, and brought forth the five kings to him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon. It happened, when they brought forth those kings to Joshua, 
that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. They came near and put their feet on the necks of them. Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Afterward Joshua struck them and put them to death, and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging on the trees until the evening. It happened at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees, and cast them into the cave in which they had hidden themselves, and laid great stones on the mouth of the cave to this very day. Joshua took Makeda on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and the king of it. He utterly destroyed them and all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining, and he did to the king of Makeda as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him to Libna, and fought against Libna, and the Lord delivered it also and the king of it into the hand of Israel, and he struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining in it, and he did to the king of it as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him to Lachish, and encamped against it and fought against it. And the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel, and he took it on the second day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were therein, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam king of Geser came up to help Lachish. And Joshua struck him and his people, until he had left him none remaining. Joshua passed from Lachish and all Israel with him to Eglon, and they encamped against it and fought against it, and they took it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were therein he utterly destroyed that day, according to all that he had done to Lachish. Joshua went up from Eglon and all Israel with him to Hebron, and they fought against it and they took it and struck it with the edge of the sword and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but he utterly destroyed it, and all the souls who were therein. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him to Debir, and fought against it, and he took it and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and they struck them with the edge of the sword, and utterly destroyed all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining, as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir, and to the king of it, as he had also done to Libna and the king of it. So Joshua struck all the land, the hill country, and the south, and the lowland, and the slopes, and all their kings. He left none remaining, but he utterly destroyed all that breathed, as the Lord the God of Israel commanded. Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea, even to Gaza and all the country of Goshen, even to Gibeon. All these kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp to Gilgal. He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a manager. An accusation was made to him that this man was wasting his possessions. He called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an accounting of your management, for you can no longer be manager. The manager said within himself, What will I do, seeing that my Lord is taking away the management position from me? I don't have strength to dig. I am ashamed to beg. I know what I will do, so that when I am removed from my management, they may receive me into their houses. Calling each one of his Lord's debtors to him, he said to the first, how much do you owe my lord? He said, A hundred batos of oil. He said to him, Take your bill, and sit down quickly and write fifty. Then he said to another, How much do you owe? He said, A hundred cores of wheat. He said to him, Take your bill and write eighty. His lord commended the dishonest manager because he had done wisely. For the sons of this world are in their own generation wiser than the sons of the light. I tell you, Make for yourself friends by means of unrighteous mammon, so that when you fail, they may receive you into the eternal tents. He who is faithful in a very little is faithful also in much. He who is dishonest in a very little is also dishonest in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, 
who will commit to your trust the true riches? If you have not been faithful in that which is another's, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You aren't able to serve God and mammon. The Pharisees, who were lovers of money, also heard all these things, and they scoffed at him. He said to them, You are those who justify yourselves in the sight of men, but God knows your hearts. For that which is exalted among men is an abomination in the sight of God. The law and the prophets were until John. From that time the gospel of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone is forcing his way into it. But it is easier for heaven and earth to pass away than for one tiny stroke of a pen in the law to fall. Everyone who divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery. He who marries one who is divorced from a husband commits adultery. Now there was a certain rich man, and he was clothed in purple and fine linen, living in luxury every day. A certain beggar named Lazarus was laid at his gate, full of sores, and desiring to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. Yes, even the dogs came and licked his sores. It happened that the beggar died, and that he was carried away by the angels to Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. In Hades he lifted up his eyes, being in torment, and saw Abraham far off, and Lazarus at his bosom. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am in anguish in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that you in your lifetime received your good things, and Lazarus in like manner bad things. But now here he is comforted, and you are in anguish. Besides all this, between us and you there is a great gulf fixed, that those who want to pass from here to you are not able, and that none may cross over from there to us. He said, I ask you therefore, Father, that you would send him to my father's house, for I have five brothers that he may testify to them, so they won't also come into this place of torment. But Abraham said to him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them listen to them. He said, No, Father Abraham, but if one goes to them from the dead, they will repent. He said to them, If they don't listen to Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded if one rises from the dead. Psalm 82 A Psalm by Asaph God presides in the great assembly. He judges among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show partiality to the wicked? Defend the weak, the poor, and the fatherless. Maintain the rights of the poor and oppressed. Rescue the weak and needy. Deliver them out of the hand of the wicked. They don't know, neither do they understand. They walk back and forth in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are shaken. I said you are gods. All of you are sons of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like men and fall like one of the rulers. Arise, God, judge the earth, for you inherit all of the nations. Psalm 83 A Song A Psalm by Asaph God, don't keep silent. Don't keep silent and don't be still, God. For behold, your enemies are stirred up. Those who hate you have lifted up their heads. They conspire with cunning against your people. They plot against your cherished ones. Come, they say, and let's destroy them as a nation, that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. For they have conspired together with one mind. They form an alliance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites, Moab and the Hagrites, Gebal, Ammon, and Amalek, Philistia with the inhabitants of Tyre, Assyria also is joined with them. They have helped the children of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, as to Sisera, as to Jabin at the river Kishon, who perished at Endor, who became as dung for the earth. Make their nobles like Oreb and Zeb, yes, all their princes like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, Let us take possession of God's pasture lands. My God, make them like tumbleweed, like chaff before the wind, as the fire that burns the forest, as the flame that sets the mountains on fire. So pursue them with your tempest, and terrify them with your storm. Fill their faces with confusion, that they may seek your name, Yahweh. Let them be put to shame and dismayed forever. Yes, let them be confounded and perish. 
that they may know that you alone, whose name is Yahweh, are the Most High over all the earth. By the fruit of his lips a man enjoys good things, but the unfaithful crave violence. He who guards his mouth guards his soul. One who opens wide his lips comes to ruin. The soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing, but the desire of the diligent shall be fully satisfied.